Hi, and welcome to the Giving Project for Children's Chapter Book Read Aloud. We're going to continue our study of Charlotte's Web today, and I'm so excited to continue with you. Last week, we focused on the reading strategy of retails, and this week, we're going to focus on questioning. So before we get started, let's do a quick five-finger retail. Characters, setting, problem, solution, conclusion, or ending wherever you are. Now again, every chapter doesn't always have to have a problem and a solution, but the way E.B. White writes, they usually do. So where we left off, Wilbur had met Charlotte and they're in the barn and he had found out because of one of the old sheeps that the intention of the Zuckermans was to kill him when the winter time came and he freaked out. And Charlotte said, enough Wilbur, cut it out. I will handle this. We also know that Wilbur was not very into Charlotte when he first met her. He thought she was kind of gross. She killed flies and prey in her web. And just over the course of a chapter, we learn to really appreciate Charlotte for who she is. And just by the title, I have a feeling that Charlotte is gonna be a very important character in this book. So questioning strategy. When doing questioning, it's exactly as it sounds. You're going to question and ask yourself the questions as you read. So I want to make sure that my brain is very into what I'm reading and as things pop up in my head, I'm just going to make sure that I say them out loud. Now, if I was doing this in my class with students, I would have them have a pack of post-its and I would have them write down the question on the post-it and just stick it in the book wherever it was with a little little part of the tab hanging out. And that way they could discuss the post-its with me or with a partner or in a small group or part of a book club. It's just a really easy way to say, hey, this is what I was thinking at this moment in the book. So without further ado, let's get started on chapter nine, Wilbur's Boast. I wonder what boast means. Oh, there's a question. I wonder what boast means. Now, you might not be able to answer your questions right away, but that's why we read along and we read ahead to try to find the answers to that. So let's find out what Wilbur's boast means. A spider's web is stronger than it looks. Although it's made of thin, delicate strands, the web is not easily broken. However, a web gets torn every day by the insects that kick around it, and a spider must rebuild it when it gets full of holes. Charlotte liked to do her weaving during the late afternoon, and Fern liked to sit nearby and watch. One afternoon, she heard the most interesting conversation and witnessed a strange event. I wonder what the strange event was in the barn. It seems to me like a lot of really strange things happen in Zuckerman's barn. Now I see that there's going to be dialogue coming up or people saying things with those quote marks. So I wanted to read ahead to find out who was saying it so I knew which character's voice to use. So I see it's Wilbur, so now I'm gonna try a little Wilbur voice. You have awfully hairy legs, Charlotte, said Wilbur as a spider busily worked at her task. My legs are hairy for good reason, replied Charlotte. Furthermore, each leg of mine has seven sections. The coccyp, the trochanter, the femur, the patella, the tibia, the metatarsus, and the tarsus. Wilbur sat bolt upright. You're kidding, he said. No, I'm not either. Say those names again. I didn't catch them for the first time. Coxet, trochanter, femur, patella, tibia, metatarsus, and tarsus. Goodness, said Wilbur, looking down at his own chubby legs. I don't think my legs have seven sections. Well, said Charlotte, you and I lead very different lives, Wilbur. You don't have to spin a web. That takes real work. I could spin a web if I tried, said Wilbur, boasting. I I've just never tried. Let's see you do it said Charlotte. Mm, I'm questioning whether or not Wilbur could really spin a web. So see, questions don't have to be a big scary thing. It's really just what you're wondering in your head. I don't think Wilbur can do that, but let's see how he tries to prove Charlotte wrong. Fern chuckled softly and her eyes grew wide with love for the pig. Okay, replied Wilbur. You coach me and I'll spin one. It must be a lot of fun to spin a web. How do I start? Take a deep breath, said Charlotte, smiling. Wilbur breathed deeply. <sighs> now climb to the highest place you can think of, like this. And Charlotte raced to the top of the little doorway. Wilbur scrambled to the top of the manure pile. Very good, said Charlotte. Now make an attachment 
with your spinnerets, hurl yourself into space, and let out the drag line as you go. Wilbur hesitated for a moment, then jumped out of the air. He glanced hastily behind, behind to see if a piece of rope was following him to check his fall, but nothing seemed to be happening in his rear. And the next thing he knew, he landed with a thump. Oomph, he grunted. Charlotte laughed so hard that the web began to sway. <laughs> what did I do wrong? said Wilbur when he recovered from his bump. Nothing, said Charlotte. It was a nice try. I think I'll try again, said Wilbur cheerfully. I believe I, what I need is a piece of string to hold me. And the pig walked out to his yard. You there, Templeton, he called. And the rat poked his head out from under the trough. Get a piece of string I can borrow. I need to spin a web. Yes, indeed, replied Templeton, who saved straight. No trouble at all, anything to oblige. And he crept into his hole, pushed the goose egg out of the way, and returned with the old piece of dirty white string. Wilbur examined it. I forgot about the goose egg. I wonder what's going to happen with that. That's just the thing, he said. Tie one. Oh, this is, sorry, this is Wilbur. That's just the thing. Tie one end to my tail, will you, Templeton? And Wilbur crouched low with his thin curly tail toward the rat. Templeton seized the string, passed it around the end of the pig's tail, and tied two half hitches. Charlotte watched in delight. Like Fern, she was truly fond of Wilbur, whose smelly pen and stale food attracted the flies that she needed. And she was proud to see that he was not a quitter, and he was trying again to spin a web. Templeton trying to tie it on. And here's what we're gonna hear about next. While the rat and the spider and the little girl watched, Wilbur climbed again to the top of the manure pile, full of energy and hope. Everybody watch, he cried. And summoning all of his strength, he threw himself into the air, head first. The string trailed behind him. I wonder if it's gonna work. Do you think it's gonna work? Let's see. But as he had neglected to fasten the other end to anything, it didn't really do any good. And Wilbur landed with a thud, crushed and hurt. Tears came to his eyes and Templeton grinned. Charlotte just sat quietly. And after a bit, she spoke. You can't spin a web, Wilbur. And I advise you to put the idea out of your mind. You lack two things you need for spinning a web. What are they? Asked Wilbur sadly. You lack spinnerets and you lack knowledge of how to spin a web. But cheer up, you don't need a web. Zuckerman supplies you with three meals a day. Why should you worry about trapping food? Oh, <sighs> Wilbur sighed. You're ever so clever and brighter than I am, Charlotte. I guess I was just trying to show off. Serve me right. Templeton untied his string and took it back to his home and Charlotte returned to her weaving. You didn't feel too badly, Wilbur, she said. Not too many creatures can spin a web. Even men aren't as good at it as spiders, although they think they're pretty good. And they try anything. Have you ever heard of the Queensboro Bridge? <laughs> That's a bridge in New York. Sort of. Uh, is that a web? <laughs> sort of, replied Charlotte. But do you know how long it took the men to build it? Eight whole years. My goodness, I would have starved to death waiting that long. I can make a web in a single evening. What do people catch on the Queensboro Bridge? Bugs? Said Wilbur. No, said Charlotte. They don't catch anything. They just keep trotting back and forth across the bridge thinking there's something better on the other side. If they'd hang head down at the top of the thing and wait quietly, maybe something good would come along. But no, with men, it's rush, rush, rush every minute. I'm glad that I'm a sedentary spider. What does sedentary mean? Asked Wilbur. Means I sit a good part of the time and I don't go wandering all over creation. I know a good thing when I see it and my web is a good thing. I stay put and I wait for what comes. Gives me a chance to think. Well, I'm sort of sedentary myself, I guess, said the pig. I have to hang around here while I want it or not. You know, I'd really like to be this evening. Where? In a forest looking for beech nuts and truffles and delectable roots, pushing aside with my wonderful strong nose, searching and sniffing along the ground, smelling, smelling, smelling. You smell just the way you are, remarked a sheep who had just walked in. 
I can smell you from here. You're the smelliest creature in the place. Wilbur hung his head. His eyes grew wet with tears. Charlotte noticed his embarrassment and she spoke sharply to the lamb. Let Wilbur alone, she said. He has a perfect right to smell, considering his surroundings. You're no bundle of sweet peas yourself. Furthermore, you are interrupting a pleasant conversation. What were we talking about, Wilbur, when we were so rudely interrupted? Oh, I don't remember, but it doesn't make any difference. Let's not talk anymore for a while, Charlotte. I'm getting sleepy. You go ahead and finish fixing your web and I'll just lie here and watch you. It's a lovely evening. And Wilbur stretched out on his side. Twilight settled over Zuckerman's barn and a feeling of peace. Fern knew it was almost supper time, but she couldn't bear to leave. Swallows passed on silent wings and in and out of the doorways, bringing food to their young ones. From across the bur road, a bird sang, Whipperoo, Whipperoo. And Lurvy sat under the apple tree and lit his pipe. The animals sniffed that familiar smell of strong tobacco, and Wilbur heard the trill of a tree toad and the occasional slamming of the kitchen door. All of these sounds made him feel comfortable and happy, for he loved life and he loved to be part of the world on a summer evening. But as he lay there, he remembered that the old sheep had told him, and the thought of death came to him and he began to tremble with fear. Charlotte, he said softly. Yes, Wilbur. I don't want to die. Of course you don't, said Charlotte in a comforting voice. I, I just love it here in the barn. I love everything about this place. Of course you do, said Charlotte. We all do. And the goose appeared, followed by her seven goslings, and they thrust their little necks out and kept up a musical whistling like a tiny troop of pipers. Wow, that's very descriptive, isn't it? I really see that movie in my mind. I hope you're visualizing too. Wilbur listened to the sound with love in his heart. Charlotte, he said, yes said the spider. Were, were you serious when you promised you would keep them from killing me? I was never more serious in my life, Wilbur. I am not going to let you die. How are you going to save me? He asked, whose curiosity was very strong at this point. Well, said Charlotte vaguely, I, I don't really know, but I'm working on a plan. That's wonderful, said Wilbur. How's the plan coming along, Charlotte? Have you gone very far with it? Is it coming along pretty well? Wilbur was trembling again, but Charlotte was cool and collected. Oh, it's coming all right, she said lightly. The plan is still in its early stages and hasn't completely shaped up yet, but I'm working on it. When will you work on it? Begged Wilbur. When I'm hanging head down at the top of my web, that's when I do my thinking, because then all the blood is in my head. I'd be only too happy to help if I can. Oh, I'll work on it alone, said Charlotte. I can think of better things when I think alone. All right, but don't fail to let me know if there's anything I can do to help, no matter how slight. Well, you must try to build yourself up. I want you to get plenty of sleep and stop worrying. Never hurry and never worry. And, and chew your food thoroughly and eat every bit of it, except the little bit that you must leave for Templeton. Gain weight and stay well, and that's how you can help. Keep fit and don't lose your nerve. Do you think you understand? Yes, I understand. Then go along to bed. Sleep is important. Wilbur trotted over to the darkest quarter of his pen and threw himself down. He closed his eyes and in another moment he spoke. Charlotte? Yes, Wilbur. May I go down to my trough and see if I have any left of my supper? I think I left just a little bit of mashed potatoes. Very well, but I want you in bed without delay. Wilbur started to race out of his yard. Slowly, slowly, said Charlotte. Never hurry and never worry. Wilbur checked himself and crept slowly to his trough and he found a bit of potato, chewed it carefully, swallowed it and walked back to bed. He closed his eyes and was silent for a while. Charlotte, he said in a whisper. Yes. May I get a drink of milk? I think there's a few drops of milk left in my trough. No, the trough is dry and I want you to sleep. No more talking. Close your eyes and go to sleep. Wilbur shut his eyes. Fern got up from her stool and started for home, her mind full of everything she had seen and heard. Good night, Charlotte, said Wilbur. Good night, Wilbur. And there was a pause. Good night, Charlotte. Good night, Wilbur. Good night, good night. I like to think of Charlotte like Mary Poppins. She is kind, 
and she's sweet, but there's a firmness to her. And you know that you don't want to mess with her. If she says something, you better listen. So let's talk about our questions in this chapter. If we go back to the very beginning, the question was Wilbur's boast. We didn't totally get an, an, a lot of information on what that means, but to boast means to brag about something. So I'm interested to see how this develops as we move forward. We did get answer to the question of whether or not Wilbur could fly and build a web like Charlotte. The answer to that is, yeah, a big resounding no. Pigs cannot fly. Um, and even though Wilbur tried and even put a string on himself and had Templeton help, it didn't really work. So great job questioning today. I enjoyed reading chapter nine, Wilbur's Boast with you. And I'm looking forward to chapter 10. So tune back in to chapter 10, an explosion. I wonder if that's it or not. Thanks, have a great day. And thank you for sharing our love of reading together. Till next time.